Hey people, it's Chili here from Live Listener Race, and I'm just bringing you a reaction video for a new song that was released by the Gorillas only just a couple of days ago. But you're seeing this video in the future, so hang on a second, how does time travel work? I don't know, let's ask 2D or Murdoch and we'll figure that out. Anyway, this video you will be seeing should be coming out probably on the 26th, if I've timed this right, which is also the same day that I will be seeing this band live. So by the time you are watching this, I am most likely at the concert right now, enjoying myself immensely. I might have a few short videos up on the channel, on the day even, just to uh, announce that celebration, of course. But anyway, keep your eyes peeled. For now, though, this is a reaction in regards to the new song by Gorillaz called Cracker Island featuring Thundercat. Uh, I'm not extremely familiar with Thundercat. The, da the name does ring a bell, though. I think they might have collabed on uh, maybe the Now Now or something like that. It just, hmm, I'll look it up after the uh, video clip. And I must say, I haven't really watched too much Gorilla, uh, Gorilla's videos in a little while, so I'm a little bit rusty on the storyline and see what they're up to, um, what phase they're up to or something at the moment. But, yeah, so here's my reaction to the video clip. All right, so... Okay, so let's get straight into this video without further ado. And uh, here we go from the official video, of course, by Gorillaz. Looks like it's a strange image. I wonder if it's... Yeah, we'll see. On Cracker Island it was born To the collective of the dawn Hmm, yeah, okay. They were planting seeds at night So obviously the official video is just a small animation. I may or may not put it in in there. But um, uh, shit, uh, I'm just trying to remember. This reminds me of something from early stuff, like Demon Days almost. It's a very simplistic tune uh, with that keyboard synth sound effect there. That dun 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 dun. You know, like uh, repetitive, yes. Simplistic, yes. But that that kind of what makes gorillas, and to a degree, of course, they're not an overcomplicated band. But yeah, I don't mind it. This just this way you wind it. Okay. Yeah, right. Just gonna pause it quickly. This is um getting into a very funky kind of area. This is interesting. Not a, a style or a shift anyway that I thought I would see. Uh, it's very seventies funk. I wouldn't say disco, very funk, you know, James Brown-esque kind of style there, and I'm loving it. Yeah, that little, the bass line was good, little bass line there, and the jaunty little guitar, like, it's very rhythmic. You know, it's easy to dance to, that's for sure. Mm. So that bass line. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, it's a filthy bass line. Love it. Mm. 
This is like crack. <laughs> it's amazing. I love this song. Yeah, I hope they play this during the concert. I'm digging this song already. Fuck. Yeah, this this song is already... I'm loving it. I, I can already tell I'm going to love this track. Hitting those octaves on the bass line is fantastic. Octaves are always a great piece of bass work that, you know, any bass player can do. And when done effectively like it is here, where it's a clean snap, you know, it adds a lot, that, that kind of pop, that boom boom. Um, and <laughs> it's almost like a staple in the bass community, especially when you want to get to that, that fun thing that you would be playing a bass line like this. It's so... It's so such a groovy song there. Any any bass players out there would, can easily, you know, you you can see it a mile away. Um, it's a staple for that community. If you don't play bass, you're probably not going to understand exactly what the hell I'm saying. But very much, you know, it it, it is of the funk era. <laughs> but it, it's not degrading of that bass line. It it's just playing into the style of that genre and. They're doing a very effective job. Look, the bass lines in Gorillaz and Heart in the past have always been fantastic. Feel Good Inc. is probably one of the best bass lines I can think of. Most memorable bass lines besides... No, no, no. Feel Good Inc. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe Clint Eastwood, but no, nowhere near as memorable as Feel Good Inc. So, this bass line, though, is going to be up there. Fuck? That was cool. Hmm. Woo! I'm just gonna quickly see what this video is of 2D reacts to the needle drop. <laughs> 2D, if you could just watch this video, I'd be so happy. <laughs> Murdoch, actually, you are the base genius behind this. So, Thundercat, let's see. I honestly, I am not familiar with you, but let's have a look. Of course. Thundercat, okay, bassist, that would make a lot of sense now, because of, obviously, the bass line that goes into this, not deriving from the band, but this is something a little bit different. Sorry, I just closed that screen, so I'll quickly just bounce in back into it. Thundercat is a bass player. Six string, interesting, very interesting. And he works a lot with Kendrick Lamar. Okay, okay. And suicidal tendencies. I did not know that. Okay. Don't know which album he played with with suicidal tendencies. But that's pretty damn interesting to hear. Uh, first coming to prominence as a member of crossover thrash band Suicidal Tendencies. I just have to quickly look that one up. So, this song, holy shit, that is amazing, this song. It's just so damn groovy to hear this bass line throughout. Thundercat, damn, insane bloody works there. So, I am minds blown at this song. I cannot wait to hear the album now. I am very eager to hear this album, actually, and this is the first in a long time because while the previous works of the Gorillas have been good, 
they've just been a bit lacking. You know, um, the now now was good. It was fine. Um, you know, I couldn't even humans. I think it was it was yeah, it was alright. And uh, seasons, I think it was. Sorry, I'm actually having a mental blank on that album right now. But that one was pretty much a good return to form. You know, bringing it back in with a few, uh, sorry, Song Machine, I should say, season one. Uh, that was some interesting works there with Robert Smith and Beck and a few other artists there. That was pretty good. That was a pretty good bloody thing there. And now with this song in particular, this is like the best gorilla song I've heard in a long time. I am super excited. I, how would I rate this? On par with Demon Days when they released bloody um, some of their singles. <laughs> Sorry, I was so excited I'm having a complete mental blank. Feel Good Ink. When I first heard Feel Good Ink, and that song was an earwear. This bass line is still playing in the background of my head, and it's just so making me smile so much. I just love the, the track. It is incredible. It's one groovy piece, and I'm hoping that when I'm at the concert right now, I'm hoping that they play this song, because damn, damn, you know? Uh, I, I'm very eager to be seeing the Gorillas uh, live. I've been wanting to for about 20 years, so I'll be very interested to see how, what kind of way that they perform and how it all goes, of course. And this is going to be one piece I'm going to be really eager to hear. I really would love this track. Hell, I mean, I'm looking back at the old stuff, go, oh, yeah, it'd be really good if they played, you know, um, bloody All Alone or something like that, and, you know, um, oh, some of their other tracks which were absolute B-sides and stuff like, um, what was it, off the single Clint Eastwood Ghost Train or um, Dracula, I think it was. Yeah, if I heard Dracula, I think I'd lose my shit. But if I heard this song now, if I heard this new song um, regarding <laughs> Cracker Island, I think I would lose my shit just as equally. It's an incredible song. Um, not much to the video, obviously it's just an animation. I uh, Anyway, I'll leave that part of it out of it, but the song itself, amazing crossover of like funk, soul, to the pop side of that is Gorillas, you know, because hell, Gorillas are at heart a pop band. It's just that they bring a fair few other genres to the mix. You know, you can see that with the first album when they're bringing that mm, kind of, uh, I guess you could say lo-fi to a degree, but it's more uh, trip hop stuff like that. And you know, Demon Days was a god. Demon Days is probably one of my favorite albums of all times. Uh, Plastic Beach was up there in my top albums of the 2010s. I think it made like the number three spot. Uh, it wasn't released on this channel. It was actually a challenge that I got for, you know, they were doing this thing on Facebook at the time. What's the top, you know, ten albums that have influenced you in the past ten years? And I said, oh, definitely has to be um, Plastic Beach. It's probably one of the most probably one of the albums that I've played the most in recent times, you know, I still play constantly, but this song, this song, holy crap, I am so keen to hear what is up next for the Gorillas. <laughs> it's bringing me back into the fold. Super excited to see what's coming out of the band there uh, for their latest stuff like that. I actually have no idea when they're going to be releasing a new album or when or if or however. I mean, you know, the the Song Machine was a was a bunch of it was a saga of songs. For example, they only released a couple of songs at a time over the course of a few uh, months, and that, I thought that was a pretty interesting way to release music and to be honest the way I look at music these days anyway is probably the only way to really release music rather than the old school method of the album you know which is almost which is pretty much dead you know a lot of bands in particular they've been releasing albums that are over 120 minutes long where physical media and CDs always restricted you to a size limit of 119 minutes or whatever it was uh, now you don't have to be you know, don't, now you don't have to conform to that. And you'll see that with uh, Iron Maiden, 
um, and their Senjutsu release. You'll see that with um, sorry, I'm just Dream Theater's latest album. I think both of those two were just over the 120 minute mark. Obviously, if they released it to a physical format, it would be you know. Uh, four plus records or two CDs because they have to split it into that but now with digital media everything being online and all that stuff it doesn't matter you could release a bloody 10 hour album you know and it, it doesn't matter it's all one album it's all there so I don't know how the gorillas are going to release their new stuff but however way they're going to release it I am definitely going to be intrigued to see how it sounds and you can definitely bet I'm going to be putting up a review as soon as humanly possible or you know and <laughs> ASAP as possible as I like to sometimes say so I don't know I can't find anything here quickly um, in regards to a new release for a new album I would imagine it's probably going to be like Song Machine um, season 2 though but we'll have to wait and see the Gorilla is always an intricate band, always doing weird and wonderful things. It's always interesting to see what is around the corner for them. Uh, Damon Arbin, particularly interesting fella in regards to how he, he produces and makes music and releases it in particular. I mean, hell, the very first album when they released it, you know, it was it had a link to a website to go check out to find out about the band and its members because. They're an animated band. They're like one of the first animated bands, purely animated, rather than Alvin and the Chipmunks, which is a bit more comical. These guys were a serious band, uh, and they, you know, had this whole website, which at the time it was like '99 or 2000, 2001 or something. The internet was barely, you know, accessible. It was in its infancy, <laughs> and here is a website dedicated to that band and all the knowledge that comes with it, which would now be defunct. But anyway, you know, they've always been doing these weird and wonderful things. Sorry, it's loud in the background there. It is pouring down at the moment. Um, hopefully there's not too much flood affected areas. So, yeah, I mean, he's always done some interesting stuff. You know, with The Fall, where he recorded that purely on his computer. I think through the I, uh, through Apple's Garage Band, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, one of the first musicians really to just do it his own way and release an album as like that and yeah obviously Song Machine like I said where it was just released in small segments not the first because I think that would probably go to uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers maybe because they had an album out which was like a kaleidoscope once you combined all of the album covers together it formed a kaleidoscope in the Spotify image anyway well it didn't correctly do it it was very weird but that album was shit out <laughs> Sorry, Red Hot Chili Peppers, but that's like the worst thing you've ever put out. It was so dull. Song Machine, on the other hand, beautiful, great stuff. Especially that that Robert <laughs> that song with um from uh, sorry Robert from bloody uh, the Cure. Absolutely dope track there, uh, Robert Smith. How the hell can I forget him? He was on South Park. Seriously, it was only season one. Anyway. I'm going to wrap this episode up. So, everyone, thank you for joining me for this episode. Comment below what you thought about this song in particular. And leave a like also for a small channel like mine. We always appreciate all the likes. Comment, blah, 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 do all the social things. So, everyone, you have a great day. Stay spicy out there. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Live Listener Raced. And if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with all your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our Chili Con Carnage crew so you can get notified for all the future videos that we put out. As we put out videos every Friday. Also, we are on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter over at Live Listener Race, so make sure to tune in over there. And don't forget to like this video so that our manager can stay very happy.